This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. Six, five, four, three, two, engine start. One, zero, and liftoff of the Delta rocket carrying blast. A gamma ray telescope searching for unseen physics in the stars of the galaxies. GLASS stands for Gamma Ray Large Area Space Telescope, and it is an orbiting observatory it's designed to survey the entire sky every day and look at gamma ray radiation coming from sources in space. This will be effectively the Hubble Space Telescope of the high energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum. And every day we're going to take a picture of the entire sky, and we expect that every day that image will change with time because the sources that we're seeing will flare on and off and will measure all, their, uh, all the interesting properties that we, we observe with the gamma rays. So it's like a movie of the sky every day. So the best way to think of gamma rays is as particles of light with very high energy. If you want to visualize what the gamma ray sky looks like, if you could see it with your eyes, uh, the, the sky you see at night with your eyes is not the best guide because it's fairly quiescent. There's not too much going on. You look out there and you see stars twinkling. And, uh, if you looked in gamma rays, what you would see, you would see a bright band where the Milky Way galaxy is, but that band would be alive with sources that are flaring on and off. We first thought of doing this experiment in 1992 when the egret experiment was in orbit and we said gee we need something better and uh, so with a colleague of mine at SLAC named Bill Atwood uh, we thought of building this experiment and that was in 1992. And the big surprise in egret was nose under the camel's tent, the egrets are a gamma ray sky that nobody, nobody had, had even dreamed of and it was a 4th of July fireworks show. Things were popping off and flaring and gamma ray bursts were bursting and pulsars were pulsing and you know if you could put on your gamma ray goggles and look at the look at the night sky it would be more like a fireworks show. Many of the sources are in our own galaxy. They're things like uh, neutron stars which are gravitationally collapsed objects that are rapidly spinning and emit pulses of uh, electromagnetic radiation as they spin. And studying the high energy radiation from these sources tells us a lot about the processes by which the particles that generate the radiation are accelerated in the environment of a neutron star. Uh, there are also objects uh, that are black holes, uh, the ultimate in a gravitationally collapsed object. And we expect to see literally 10, perhaps 10,000 such sources uh, outside our galaxy uh, that, that are basically black holes that are lurking at the cores of what are called active galaxies. And in these sources, the radiation is generated uh, in the vicinity of a very rapidly spinning black hole. And especially when the galaxy is young and the inner portion of the galaxy is still replete with a lot of garbage, dust, stars, whatever. Uh, this black hole is in feeding mode and it's accreting the, this matter into it and during this accretion process uh, the stuff starts swirling around at great velocities. Uh, these things are beyond your imagination both in size and ferocity. And what we're seeing is the energy extraction from that spinning black hole and it comes out in the form of gamma rays. So we expect to see literally thousands of those kinds of sources. The belief is that a, a, a rotating black hole uh, that's in the vicinity, of, has a magnetic field nearby, will twist the magnetic field around in such a way that it generates a large electric field. And that electric field is, uh, has such a strength that any charged particles that happen to wander in will be accelerated to close to the speed of light. So the most distant ones that we see are probably 10 billion light years from Earth. What that means is that the, when the gamma rays were emitted, from the time they were emitted to the time they arrive here at Earth, it took 10 billion years, traveling at the speed of light. 
So that's a sizable fraction of the size of the known universe. Perhaps we'll even see that these objects extend to the edge of namely high redshift with enormous black holes and they run into a very interesting conundrum. The black hole was too big to have been made since the universe was born. A problem, and if that is the case, then some of these black holes, in fact, will be revealed as primordial. And that's the quest of all of this. Where did we all come from? What are the smoking guns? What are the clues, the relics left behind from the creation of everything? It's interesting to think about something you've worked on for 16 years, and it's sitting on top of a rocket, and now it's going to hurtle into space, and you just hope it gets there. We have collaborators from France, Italy, Japan, Sweden, uh, Germany, and of course the U.S. Because it, the light is so energetic, you cannot focus it like you would light with an optical telescope. Overall, a gamma ray passing through the glass structure has about a 65% chance of becoming an electron-positron uh, pair on its passage uh, through, through this material. So we'll see uh, a part particle and an antiparticle, matter and antimatter, materialize inside the detector, and then we can track the direction of the charged particles and, in a sense, take a photograph of the particles as they go through uh, the detector. And by reconstructing the direction of the charged particles that are created, the two charged particles, we can trace them back, figure out where the pair conversion event occurred, where the gamma ray converted into the particles, and then point back and figure out where the gamma ray came from. And in that way, we effectively have a telescope, because we can trace back where the gamma ray came from on the sky. Shortest time scale sources we're going to see are what are called gamma ray bursts. And these occur in random directions on the sky about twice per day. And the duration of a gamma ray burst is anywhere from a few thousandths of a second to perhaps a hundred or a thousand seconds. And when the gamma ray burst is on, it is the brightest uh, most energetic source in the sky. So in that brief period of time, uh, say one second, for example, the gamma ray burst will put out more energy in one second than the entire rest of the universe. So the source of these gamma ray bursts, we believe, are stellar explosions near the end points of the life of a massive star as it forms a black hole. That's one kind of source. The other favorite conjectured model for a gamma ray burst is the coalescence of two compact objects like neutron stars that are orbiting each other. And as they orbit each other, they lose energy due to the emission of gravitational radiation, and eventually they coalesce together. And at that moment they coalesce, there are predictions they will emit a burst of gamma rays. So, in fact, we expect to observe that kind of phenomena as well. So, in order to catch these things, we have to be looking in the right direction. So that's where the Large Area Telescope on the GLASS mission is very important. It has an enormous field of view. And so every orbit we go around the Earth, we survey the entire sky. So if a gamma ray burst goes off and we catch it in our field of view, we can in fact issue an alert autonomously to the spacecraft and the spacecraft will then instead of continuing to do this scanning survey of the entire sky will interrupt the scan and point in the direction of the gamma ray burst and that alert goes out across the world via the internet all of the data from this observatory goes public and any scientist anywhere in the world can access it and use it I think the most exciting discoveries we're going to make with GLASS are probably the things we haven't thought of. But among the list of phenomena that we might see, that we've actually thought about, uh, uh, the detection of dark matter would perhaps be the most exciting discovery.
We know that it's out there in space because of its gravitational effects uh, that we can observe, you know, the tug of the gravity of our, of our galaxy on nearby satellite galaxies tells us there's more matter in our galaxy than can be accounted for with the, gal with the matter that emits light that we see uh, around us. So there's much more matter there. So one possibility is that glass will detect gamma rays from the annihilation that's predicted to occur when two dark matter particles meet each other. So one of the things glass will do is look for the gamma ray signatures of dark matter. And I have to say, that's a very difficult undertaking to sort those gamma rays out from the gamma rays generated by everything else. And we have some ideas how to do that. But I have to say, if we succeed, that would in fact be probably the most uh, important discovery we would make. The preceding program is copyrighted by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu.